So I want to quickly, and with some color coding, go over the quantum numbers again. So the principal quantum number, that's what we're calling N. That's the energy level. That's talking about the cloud size. The larger cloud means that you've got more energy and it's further from the nucleus. So as energy increases, you see those numbers go up. So we're going from energy level 1 to energy level 4 and even higher. In biology, we're only going to be working with 1 through 3. 2 in squared is the maximum number of electrons that can be in these energy levels. So when you're at energy level 1, you have 2 electrons max, then 2 gives you 8, n equals 3 gives you 18. This cursive L, or lambda, stands for angular momentum. That's looking at the shape of the orbitals in these energy levels. The orbital shapes are called S, P, D, and F, and those describe the locations where you're most likely to find the electrons. The different shapes are found starting at different energy levels. You start finding orbital shape S at level 1, P starts at level 2, D starts at level 3, F starts at level 4. So visualized another way, when you at N equals 1, you have 1S. When N equals 2, you have 2S and 2P. When N equals 3, you have 3S, 3P, and 3D. And when N equals 4, you have 4S, 4P, 4D, and 4F. And so this is just telling you where you're going to find those electrons, what, where they're most likely to be found, and what shape they're most likely to be found in. And remember, we're talking about the probability where that electron will be found. Once we've described how far the electron is from the nucleus and what shape of electron density cloud that electron is most likely to be found in, then you have to describe what the orientation is of that orbital, that shape, that density cloud. And that's what M of lambda is. And so if you're looking at the orbital shapes, S has 1 different orientation because it's just a sphere. P has three different orientations. Orbital D has five different orientations. And orbital F has seven orientations. In these orbitals, the electrons spin. Spin is rather complex. Physicists are still describing exactly what spin is because it doesn't behave like any kind of spin that we have here on Earth that we're used to seeing. It's it's sort of like a top spinning, but it's not really. But it is magnetic in nature, and so when an electron enters an orbital spinning in one direction, as more electrons enter those different orbitals and different orientations, they're going to spin the same direction. And so we describe this like orbital 1s would have an up-spinning electron, and then the next one would spin in the opposite direction, a downspinning electron. But in P, in 2s, you'd get the same thing, an upspin and a downspin. But in P, you'd get upspin, three upspin. They would all be spinning in the same direction. And then three downspin, they'd all be spinning in the opposite direction. And so that could also start all down, and then they'd all spin up. But conventionally, you start filling with upspin. So taking the things we've looked at so far, when you're looking at the shell and subshell or orbital energies, you start with n equals 1, and n equals 1 only has a 1s orbital, and then you have n equals 2, and so filling from lowest to highest, you have 2s, then 2p, then you've got n with level 3, and you'll have S, then P, then D. But here's the funny thing. Level 4, S, is actually lower in energy. It takes less energy to fill level 4S than level 3D. And so 4S will fill first. And then you have that same trend going 4P, and then 4D. And if we had more room here, and if this was chemistry, not biology, I'd go on to describe 5s, and that's also lower than 4d. So how in the world are you supposed to remember all of this? Well, that's why you have 
the diagonal rule. So if you take them, the levels of N with the S, P, D, and F orbitals, you place them in this orientation, then you can use the diagonal rule. And so here you can see that if you fill in these diagonal order, you're going to fill from bottom up. 1s, then 2s, then 2p, then 3s, then 3p, then 4s, then 3d, then 4p. So you have to line it up correctly. You need to draw the arrows going from top right to bottom left. But if you follow those arrows, you're going to get the order in which the subshells fill. Now we're going to look at this with the periodic table because a trend emerges that's really, really cool. So I've color coded it for you. We're going to fill the orbitals from lowest energy to highest energy. We're going to put two electrons in each orbital, but one electron is going to enter at a time. They're all going to enter spinning in the same direction before the second electron comes in filling in the opposite direction. And so here you go, working through the periodic table, starting with hydrogen, then helium, 1s is full, lithium and beryllium, 2s is full. Look what happens with P. We're filling the right side of the periodic table. Then moving down one column on the periodic table, and we've started with N equals 3, and then 3P, and then 4S. We've moved down again, and watch what happens as we start to fill 3D. We've entered another portion of the periodic table, and so that's the trend. First, we observed and arranged the periodic table based on how these things reacted. And then we started to understand the physics behind it, and they both, they complement each other. It's, it's so beautiful. And all of that was basically to get you to here, which is actually much easier than all the stuff I've been describing, but I just think it's so cool and I really want you to be familiar with it. It'll give you a leg up in chemistry. But here is just how you would represent the configuration of electrons for a particular element. So carbon has six electrons. So it's got two in its 1s orbital. It can put two in its 2s orbital. So note these are superscripted and it designates or denotes the number of electrons. And then 2p, well, there were four electrons we've already identified. And then we've got a, you know, plus some number of electrons equals six electrons. I know you can do that math. So the two is what's remaining. And so carbon's electron configuration would be what's seen here. Let's do that with potassium. It has 19 electrons. First, it's good to just list out the orbitals in order of lowest energy to highest energy. 3D is about as high as you need to know. Actually, 4S is about as high as you need to know. And then you can start putting in 2, then 2. Well, that's 4, so we need more. 6 makes 10. We need more. Then 2 makes 12. Still more electrons. 6 makes 18. So we're going to need one more electron in that 4s orbital, and we can erase 3d. And there you have it, electron configurations. You are ready to go.